Well, good afternoon. Uh, it's Dr. Kremens again. I'm here to talk a little bit about the two Stuart Dybeck stories that you are reading for this week. Uh, and in this video, I'll also mention how the story Farwell in particular, which is the shorter of the two stories, um, also connects in with our first paper for the class. Uh, so as I said in my other previous videos, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you enjoy the stories. If you haven't read Stuart Dybeck before, um, you'll get to notice that over the first couple of weeks of the class, um, and even later in the class, actually, with, with only a couple of exceptions, most of the writers are Chicago or Chicago-based writers. We do Dybeck this week. As I've said before, we'll do Gwendolyn Brooks and we'll do John Porcellino and his graphic novel. And so we'll, we'll have a variety of both contemporary and older Chicago writers. And again, all of them are, as you've probably already noticed, if you've read Farwell or Blight, they are stories about friendship, about these connections that people make, even people that seem as though they have nothing at all in common. And those are some themes that I want you to think about, not only as we go forward, and as we get into the later papers for class, we start looking for research materials uh, on these writers to incorporate into our papers. But I also want you to think about these themes as they relate to the first paper for the class. Now, I am going to post a separate video that just goes through the outline structure for paper number one and talks about uh, suggestions as to how, to how to write it, how to draft it, um, how to think through some of the ideas. I'll do that later in the week because I want you just right now um, to focus on the readings. Uh, you're currently working on um, that short introductory quiz. It's really more of a getting to know you kind of thing, and you'll get five points for answering those questions. Uh, but the last question on the quiz does ask you to take a look at the topic for paper number one and to think about how you're going to approach it and what you're not only going to write about, but also what you're going to draw, because you are going to make a, a simple map of your own. It doesn't have to be complicated. If you don't draw or don't like drawing, it can be very, very simple. Um, but I'll talk about that a little bit in this video, just in terms of how it relates to these, these couple of readings particularly the Farwell reading. Uh, and then I'll save more details on the paper for a little later in the week because, again, you're still settling in. It's the new semester, and so I'm sure you're still adjusting to your new schedule and your other new classes. So for right now, I just want to focus on Farwell, and I'll talk a little bit about Blight as well. That's a longer story, so I'll do a separate video on that. Uh, also later this week or early next week just to give you some more pointers on that story. But for Dybeck himself, here are some things to keep in mind. If you want to take notes on this, you're welcome to. Uh, I think some of these ideas and, and details on his background will probably help as you're reading the story, although he's a very straightforward writer. Uh, but Dybeck is, is a very autobiographical writer. You've probably noticed that if you've started these stories or even flipped through the scans uh, that are on Blackboard from this book. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to use my copy of the book here because that's where I got the uh, scans of the stories from that are on Blackboard for you. Uh, he's a Chicago-based writer for many years. He taught at Western Michigan State University, um, but has returned to Chicago when he retired from Western Michigan State. He came back to teach at Northwestern um, in Evanston, and I believe now still lives in the city. His, his, uh, his family was from here. You'll notice in the stories, particularly in Farwell, that he is a graduate of Loyola uh, University, uh, which he refers to in Farwell. Again, he doesn't... He doesn't come out and say that that's an autobiographical story, but I think we can guess that it is because he himself graduated from Loyola. I'm sure had some confusion when he first got out of college in terms of what he wanted to do and what kind of writing career that he wanted to develop. So when you're reading Farwell and you're reading Blight, one thing to keep in mind is that those are essentially autobiographical stories, both of them. So they're telling uh, memories from his past. In the case of Blight, the story is about all these crazy characters that he knew when he was in high school, and they were in bands together, and they had various adventures um, together. As you'll notice, I don't want to give spoilers to these stories, so I'm going to try not to do that if you haven't read them yet. Um, but that's also an autobiographical piece, uh, more about his high school years, whereas Farwell is about right when he graduates from college. So you can read them in, in that order if you want to, if you want to read Blight first to see his high school experiences in the city of Chicago, and then read Farwell, you can, if you want to read them in some kind of chronological order. But in the book itself, The Coast of Chicago, it actually starts with Farwell. That's the first story in the book. And then Blight comes a couple of stories later. So it really doesn't matter what order you read them in. Um, but if you wanted to read them chronologically, you'll see what his high school experiences were like in the late 50s, early 60s. And then if you read Farwell second, you'll see what happened when he goes off 
and uh, graduates from Loyola University here in the city. So let me focus on Farwell because Farwell is the story of the two that is most closely connected with paper number one. Because paper number one is asking you to do something that's very similar to what Babovich does in the story and also very similar to what John Porcelino does in the map that I gave you that's on the directions themselves. I wanted you to see a kind of a memory map because you don't have an illustration in Farwell of the map that Babovich talks about at the end of the story. You have to imagine it for yourself. But I like teaching these two stories together, or I should say I like teaching John Porcelino's map of Hoffman Estates and his childhood in Hoffman Estates with Farwell because they share a lot in common. Now, in Farwell, what we have is a character Again, an autobiographical version of Dybeck himself, who has just graduated from college and is looking to make connections. He remembers this Russian lit professor that he had, uh, Babovich, and he goes to visit him at the end of Farwell, uh, at the end of the street. You know, as you know, if you've read the story, he uh, throws that snowball at his window and Babovich is terrified at first. He thinks that maybe he's under attack. It's pretty clear that Babovich was in the military um, uh, probably during World War II, it seems, and then then had escaped from Ukraine or escaped from the Soviet Union uh, and then moved to England. And he's he's got sort of a um, mysterious past. There's a lot of hints as far as what Babovich's background probably was. He talks about owning the bookshop that was bombed at some point. He talks uh, about uh, his military service only in passing. So we know that Babovich himself is an immigrant from Ukraine. And we know that the main character, the narrator of the story, is this recent Loyola graduate who had Babovich as a professor in his Russian lit class. And they're both trying to make connections. So I want you to think about that as you're reading Farwell. It's, it's a theme that also comes up in Blight, but it's very much in Farwell in terms of how the characters interact with each other. Because you have this young person who's at the start of his life, at the start of his career, having just gotten out of college, um, very close in age to, to a lot of you who are in the class, or if you're coming back to college and you're closer to my age, you probably will have memories of what it was like to be 18, 19, 20, 21, and how difficult those, those transition years can be as you go from young adult to adulthood. And so there's that theme in the story, old age, which is Babovich, uh, his his uh, his professor, and then the narrator, based on Dybeck himself, who is first setting out in the world. And as you can see at the end of the story, trying to figure out what does he want to do now that he's graduated from college. And I would guess that he seeks out Babovich because he admires him. He probably liked his class, enjoyed the readings that he did in his class. And so he reaches out to Babovich as a person that he wants as a role model. And so when he goes to visit him, you remember Babovich is listening to this Russian opera singer, which is the sound is echoing down far well. Uh, he visits him in his apartment. He sees all the books stacked up everywhere. All these elements from Babovich's life that are in this room that he's collected, even though he's far away from home. He's far away from where he originally uh, came from uh, as he got here to Chicago. And the one item that seems to be the most significant thing other than maybe his record player and his records, in Babovich's apartment is the map. The map on the wall of the apartment. And what's on the map? Well, here I'm going to give a spoiler because I, I can't really explain the rest of it or talk about some of it if I don't say what's on the map. But if you've read the story, you know that on the map is, and if you want to pause here and don't want to have a spoiler, you can pause. Okay, so on the map are a series of bakeries, his favorite bakeries back in his home city, in Ukraine. These bakeries evoke for Babovich memories of his childhood. So his memory map of his childhood is one that's covered in bakeries because those are the things that he wishes he could return to and that he wishes that he could revisit again as he is here in the present. Now, if you look at John Porcelino's map, you'll notice that that is all about his childhood in Hoffman Estates. So some of it's realistic. He mentions the hospital where his mother worked. He'll mention the golf course that he probably got in trouble on. There's a skull and crossbones there, um, warning other kids away from that. But he also has odd things like an anthill that nobody but a little kid would remember, right? And so you'll see uh, both of the maps, the Porcelino map that I gave you on the directions, and then Babovich's map are very similar. They're childhood maps, they're memory maps, 
they have locations on them that are very, very significant to the, in, in Farwell's case, one of the main characters in the story, and in Porcelino's case, um, it's, it's kind of an introduction to some of the other stories that we're going to read, which are also autobiographical. So now, how does this all tie into your paper? And as you'll notice, I'm not going to talk about Blight as much in this video because I just want to focus right now on, on Farwell. As you think about paper number one, you're going to do two things. First of all, you do need to make a map. Now, again, it doesn't have to be elaborate, but your map should have three locations on it. And those three locations should somehow be significant to you. So let me give you an example. If I were making a map for this class, here are the things that I would put on my memory map if I wanted to share something with you as the reader. First thing I would put on, um, it's not a map, but I did, I did draw this uh, image of a hydrangea plant that my sister had sent me. I, I did this over the break. I'll, I'll try to make a map over the next couple of days too and, and see what I can come up with. But this is a little drawing that I did of, uh, of a hydrangea that, that we had um, behind our house when I was a kid. So when I was a little kid, we had this great hydrangea tree or bush, I guess. Um, we call them snowball trees. Uh, you, you know, that they're, they're usually white. Sometimes they're purple. And I have vivid memories of that. It was kind of my childhood marker in the backyard of my house. So I knew if I was over near the hydrangea tree and the hydrangea bushes, my grandmother wouldn't find me if she tried to, um, if I was um, being less than perfect as a little boy and my mom and dad were at work and my grandmother and my great aunt were taking care of me and sometimes I would get a little mischievous, uh, I knew I could go hide behind that hydrangea plant because my grandmother would not find me. Although now that I look back at it, I think she did know where I was, but it was just letting me have fun playing in the backyard. But anyway, uh, I have a good memory of that hydrangea plant. So maybe if I were doing the map and not just a drawing of the plant, um, I, would, I would put that plant or that bush on my map and I would say, well, this conjures a memory for me of those times when I was a kid where my grandmother and I got to spend time together, even if sometimes I was being a little bad and I would get in trouble and then run into the backyard and try to hide behind those, uh, those flowers. Um, the other thing I have, and I bought this yesterday at the grocery store, because thinking of Babovich's story and uh, this fondness that we have for places like bakeries where we have so many distinct memories attached to them. Uh, when I was at our local grocery store down the block yesterday, I bought um, one of these mini cheese pizzas, which I'm, I'm gonna have for lunch after I finish making a couple of videos. Um, and you may say to yourself, okay, he's got a mini cheese pizza. Those are great, we all love them. I mean, who doesn't like a mini cheese pizza every once in a while? You pop it in the uh, toaster oven, it's all ready in a couple of minutes, just have it with a nice glass of water for lunch and, and, you're, and I'm good to go for the rest of the afternoon. Um, but my favorite mini pizza, uh, comes from the Brooklyn Bakery back in Waterbury, Connecticut, my hometown. And again, I have vivid memories of visiting that bakery when I was a kid because it was mostly a Lithuanian bakery and, and my mom's side of the family. Um, uh, my grandmother uh, was a Lithuanian immigrant who uh, um, was born in Lithuania in 1913 and then uh, uh, you know came over here with her mom when she was small. Um, and so as a child, uh, she would take me along with her sister and her brothers, uh, who interestingly enough were born here, but she was born back in Lithuania because her mom was sort of going back and forth from, from the U.S. to, uh, to her, her family back in, in uh, Lithuania at that time. At any rate, as a little kid, I loved going to the Brooklyn Bakery because it had not only things like this, which is clearly not a Lithuanian <laughs> Um, meal, but we, they had the Lithuanian rye bread and the cookies and everything else. So every time I go home to visit my folks and my sister back east in my hometown, I always insist that I have to go to the Brooklyn Bakery, which is still around and still makes the best rye bread. Not just best Lithuanian rye bread, but the I think the best rye bread ever. And they also make really good mini pizza, mini pizzas. So this is not going to be as good as the one that I remember from the Brooklyn Bakery when I was a kid, but it'll be close enough for the sake of memory. So I give you those examples because, again, if I were making this memory map, I would have that hydrangea plant on it. I would somehow try to figure out a way to include the bakery, even though the bakery was quite a few streets away from where I grew up. I guess you'd have to make like a, a, a map that's... Uh, um, covers a lot more territory than like John Porcelino's map. But the goal of this paper is to emulate what you're seeing in the Farwell story. So think about three locations, maybe from your childhood, they could even be more recent, um, that are very meaningful to you and evoke very good memories. The kind of memories that you would want to share with somebody else. 
um, maybe someone you're becoming friends with, maybe someone that you're making a connection with so that they knew a little bit more about you and, and what you value, okay? And that's what Babovich is doing, those childhood memories of the bakeries back in his hometown, his home city in Ukraine. And then John Porcelino's memories, some of them funny, some of them just practical of growing up in Hoffman Estates. And again, as I've learned from other times teaching both this story, Farwell, and also from uh, having taught John Porcelino over the last several years, some of you may even live close by to where Porcelino's old neighborhood is in Hoffman Estates over there on Moon Lake Boulevard right off of Gulf. Um, so I mention all this because Again, the way to approach uh, not only these readings, but the first paper is, you know, read the directions for the paper, read Farwell and Blight, again, in whatever order you want to, but Farwell is the one that's more closely connected to paper number one. Uh, we'll get more into writing about Blight with paper number two. Okay, that's that's when we get into more uh, dieback and a little more Porcelino, and we'll start getting into Saunders' Neros. But we got, a, we got a couple weeks before we get into that. So for right now, like I said, do the readings. Uh, I hope you enjoy them. I'll talk a little bit more in my next video, not only about the paper, but also about blight. Uh, and as always, send me an email. Maybe I'll see some of you on the open office hours. Again, that's optional. I'll, I'll, we'll be doing that tomorrow, um, since I'm taping this on Wednesday the 20th. Uh, tomorrow on Thursday the 21st in the afternoon, if you want to log on and talk with me one-on-one -on -one or ask me any questions, you're welcome to do that. But if you can't make that time for those open office hours, not a problem. Um, again, just send me an email. I'm happy to answer questions. And I'm also happy to read a rough draft of your paper. If you do have time to get started, you want to you want to get a little head start on it, you just want to make an outline for it, send it along and I'll be happy to take a look at it. All right, so I guess I'm going to go have this pizza now. Again, with the full knowledge that it will not be as good as the one uh, in my favorite bakery back in my hometown, but it'll be good enough for this afternoon, all right? So again, enjoy the stories. I hope your first week here uh, in the spring semester at Harbor is going well, and I'll see you in the next video if I don't talk to you before that over email. See you then.